In this example, we will try to do some calculations with loops. And now I have a list of uh, summations that I would like to do without doing it actually manually. Uh, and as you can see, each one of them ends uh, with, with some specific number, which means that they're actually finite sums. Finite means that we know how many terms are included in each of them. So uh, we just have to find the patterns in each one of them and then write our four loops uh, respectively. So let's start with the first one, which is the simplest. And let's start with the usual, clear all. And so uh, our sum has uh, numbers from 1 to 20 and there's always a difference of 1 between respective two uh, elements. So all we have to do is keep adding every time one number bigger. So I will have a for loop and let's say I will call my each next number x and I know that, that x will have to be changing from 1 to 20 because I'm summing anything starting from 1 and ending on 20. And the difference between those numbers that, that are being added is just 1, so I don't have to add the step size. Of course, if I did add, uh, it's okay, but it's just an, an unnecessary addition because exactly 1 colon 20 means that we take step 1. Okay, and then as I jump into the loop, I realize that, of course, in order to start summing something up, uh, I need to uh, have my sum value start from something and as we keep summing and we haven't gotten anything yet or we haven't added anything yet, our sum is initially zero. I will call it S1 for the first example since we are having five of those. So now, uh, following the, the example which was given in the for loop video already, all we have to do is every time increase our sum by that particular number that we are interested in. And in this case it's x, because the loop will keep changing that x for us. First it will be 1, then 2, then 3, up to 20, and once it uses 20 it will leave the loop. But of course I cannot add in just s1 plus x and leave it in this way, because in this way s1 always has value 0. What I want is S1 to be updated, so every time I have added that new bigger number, I just uh, assign this new value to my S1. So in this way, once I've added all, all these numbers, I should have my S1 result. So let's run it. It ran with no errors and we can see from the workspace or also ask for it here the sum altogether is 210. Uh, you can go ahead and check it yourself manually. Uh, okay, this one was simple. Let's do the second one. So I already know, again, I have to prepare the initial sum value. And now let's look at the formula. So now what is happening is that we are actually having values from 15 uh, going with difference 10. Uh, up to 4005. So actually I could even copy this so that I don't have to type everything new. I know now that I'm operating on S2 and now my X starts from 5 it ends on 405, 4005 sorry but now it's not every number in between it's only with difference 10. So I'm adding this step size here in between my start and end. Uh, do I have to change this x name? No, I don't, because once this loop is over, we never use or need this x again. So its last value 20 it will simply be forgotten when this loop starts working. So it doesn't really matter. So all we have to do is run it again and our S2 now 
has a value. Okay, so it's going quite nice and quick. Let's move on to the third one. I will prepare my summing again in the same way because this this will always in this kind of exercise this part will always look the same or quite commonly use the same. It's just that this x may be changing because it will be either defined differently in here or maybe there will be uh, also some modification on it. So let's jump to our task and now see what are we summing. So yes, here comes a bit different case. So now what is happening is we are adding things which are uh, pairwise multiplied. So we are always multiplying uh, number by the number bigger by 2 than the first one. And so we know that now our loop should start from 2 and I would suggest that our loop is indexing uh, is indexing uh, those left hand side numbers. So we have 2, uh, 4, and then there will be 6 and so on until, not a hundred, but until the last left hand side number which is 98. So that's that's kind of the base for our loop or for the indexing of the loop. But then what we will be doing is that uh, there will be the particular number and it will be multiplied by al always that number bigger uh, by t or increased by 2 because for 2 we multiply it by 4, 2 plus 2 is 4 for 4 we multiply it by 6, 4 plus 2 is 6 6 plus 2 is 8, 98 plus 2 is 100 so let's try and put it in the code so as I said, we start from 2 we end on 98 and of course we need the step 2 in between and then here in my formula now what I will have to do is uh, the S3 remains because this is the sum that we are updating but now it's not enough that I only have X here because then I will only be adding 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 and so on but what I need to add is X multiplied with itself increased by 2 so when X is 2 this will be 2 times 4 when X is 4 this will be 4 times 6 when x is 12, this will be 12 times 14, and so on. Up to the last one, when x is 98, this will be 98 times 100. Okay, so let's run this one. And our S3 is now calculated. Alright, so the next one again has a similar feature. Uh, that it's not enough to just add x every time to our sum, but something has to be done with that x. Uh, but now it's not multiplication or, or increasing, uh, it is actually power. So we are raising it to the power. Uh, our loop, once again, we should do indexing uh, correctly. So let's put this base in here again. We have some 4, and now I, c I will do it in two ways to show you uh, that it's really about how you approach the problem and, and just break it down so that you do it correctly. Uh, always the, the power to which we raise the number is bigger by 1 than the base. So once again it's enough if our loop is indexing, for instance, the base. So in this case it starts at 1 it ends at 10 with step 1. So I have 1 to 10. But now I cannot again add just x. I have to add x, which is raised to a power x plus 1, because it's always 1 bigger than the base. When x is 1, this will become 1 power 2. When x is 2, this will become 2 power 3. When x is 10, this will become 10 power 11. So that's one way, but we could have actually, uh, I'll call it 
version A. We could have done it slightly differently. I will now call it version B. Uh, and I will be indexing based on based on the power. So now you see the power is changing from 2 to 11 and all, that power is applied on the number which is always by one smaller than the power. So I could equally well do my indexing like this. But in here now I cannot do x power x plus 1 but rather my power is just x but the number which is being raised to the power has to be increased by one with respect to that power value. So now when I run this, uh, when I ask for my S4A and S4B, uh, I should get the same results. And that's the case. You can see with quite high precision that indeed these are the same results. So we are left with one more uh, of the last one. So let's once again take our base uh, base construct. Now I'll call it S5. Okay, and now let's see again what is happening. So now we have a bunch of fractions added up. And we look for patterns once again. So uh, apparently there is 30 of them. Uh, in numerator we always have uh, a number bigger by 1 from the previous, it starts you know, at 1 and it ends at 30. And in denominator we have a sum where part of this sum always repeats numerator and then it's the numerator increased by 1. So let's write in here how it looks. If we have a number uh, then it is divided by itself plus itself plus 1. Or we could just write 2, two times x plus 1. And of course here in the in indexing uh, we were starting at 1, ending at 30, so that's what I have to do in here. Uh, once again I could have been indexing from 2 to 31 and then instead of having x plus x plus 1, I would have x minus 1. So it's just the way uh, you see, you, you could write it in any way which feels more uh, natural for you. In any case, uh, when we run this one and ask for s5, we are having our results. And of course you can check it manually yourself.